All right, welcome back to Urban X TV. We have the Black Dot in the building. Always a pleasure to speak to the family. What's good, man? Uh, everything has been great, man. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate the love and support from the, uh, the videos we did on the Nipsey Hustle piece. Yeah, the response was overwhelming. The response was overwhelming. Uh, you know, we were just giving our take on it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right, wrong, or indifferent. Uh, and the response was equally balanced. Some people was like, Dot, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. And there were people like, yo, Dot, I appreciate that. So, uh, it, it, but it was overall uh, a great opportunity to, to, to speak to the family, considering we hadn't spoke to the family in a while. There's a bunch of new developments in that. Yeah. Uh, we'll maybe touch on them later or something. Maybe. Some things I won't touch because they haven't hit the public yet. And because uh, my sources is bananas. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, but... I wanted to open up and talk to, to the family about branding and the overhype aspect of what branding has become. Okay. So this is going to be a black dot rant, and then we'll just toss a couple of topics okay. lately of what's going on. Now, this whole branding shit is overhyped. Uh, you know, build your brand, <clears throat> start a brand, chase your brand, uh, you know, everything brand, 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 brand. When everybody has a brand, say it with me, nobody has a brand. And what I mean by that, I am not saying you should not be out developing yourself. I am not saying you should not be out chasing your dreams. I'm saying you need to make sure that they are your dreams. I'm going to say that again. Make sure the dreams you're chasing are actually your dreams. This social media, Instagram piece here has forced people into doing things that they're not comfortable doing for uh, status quo, the reactivists and things of that nature. Because I refuse to believe that one out of every third person I know is a rapper and they got a mixtape coming out. Or every third chick is an Instagram model. Or every other person is a healer. Or every other person is starting a brand. I refuse to believe that that's a coincidence and there's not some mind control aspects involved with it. Oh, okay. and, and I'm saying, say it again. No, I, I was about to say, explain that part. M meaning, when, when so many people are doing the same exact things, and it gives off the, uh, under the guise that it was an original thought of their own, <clears throat> that's mind control. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, so, what I notice is that we have become the digital sweatshop workers. That's what I'm calling us. Mm. Everybody's got an Instagram page. Everybody's looking for followers. Everybody's trying to get their subscribers up. And we have just become worker bees just in a different context. You know what I'm saying? So we are digital sweatshop workers. Everybody got a device in their hand, even when they're not at home. And all we're doing is this and trying to build something up that may be irrelevant. Mm. So I want y'all to take time of what I'm saying and don't think I'm hating. Are you telling me not follow my dreams? No, I am not. Just make sure they're your dreams. And how do you do that? You have to look in the mirror at times and assess what brings you passion. I tried to learn coding. I told y'all this. I ordered the shit. <laughs> I prepped myself. I was like, I'm going in. And then I said, fuck this shit. It was too hard for me, right? Now I could have still learned it because I'm, I'm a learner. But then I said, I'm not passionate about this. Why am I spending my man hours learning something that I am not passionate about? Now, those who are passionate about coding, because I tell young people who are a little bit more inclined because they came in on the digital timeline to get involved with it, there are opportunities there, right? Yeah. I know people who are passionate about music and they'll do music for free. They'll do music because they love doing music. And then it leads to them perhaps being paid for their music. And then there are people who are just starting a brand who shouldn't start a brand. Everybody is not built to run their own company and start a brand. I'm actually like, you know, when you see the, the ads on YouTube and somebody says like anybody could start this brand. I don't know how everybody can have a consulting company like. These are the points I'm trying to or like, you know, like uh, those those types of and we need to start reevaluating. Yeah. And the, the, the interesting thing about it is those of us who think we're not under mind control are the ones most under mind control 
because we think we're not. You know what I mean? So the whole the whole programming goes by, you know, because and don't get me wrong, those who are equipped to start a brand, you know it, you see it, they're passionate about it. Everybody can't run their own business. And you shouldn't be shamed because you can't. I respect the sanitation worker. I respect the mailman. I respect the bus driver. I respect the nurse. I respect the person serving my coffee. These are serviceable positions that society has made us look down on because these people don't have a brand and they're not starting their own brand. Well, if everybody had a brand, how the hell do we get our mail? How do we get our garbage taken care of? <laughs> and these are positions that used to hold weight. Now, don't get me wrong. You still need to balance out your life and find passion in what you do, but don't feel shame because you are a nurse or a, a, a a damn uh, a bus driver or or whatever the case may be but this whole build the brand and most of us the reason we fail because we don't know how to run business we've never been in a before you can start a brand you need to go work for a brand right how about that you know what i mean so for, for those because i already see the comments before they even develop you hating no i'm not i'm trying to put you on to gain brothers and sisters I'm seeing a trend take place on social media in particular, where now we have become industrial worker bees. This is the new warehouse workers. Everybody online building a fictional fucking brand that has no bearing on anything. As a matter of fact, if the white boys was like Thanos and snapped their fingers and took social media away, how many of us have a brand without social media? I'll wait. A meaningful brand without social media. Social media made a lot of people rich. A lot of black people, uh, you know, a lot of YouTube mm. scholars, a lot of characters have been developed, and that was all a part of the plan. And you think that you are advancing, but are you really advancing using somebody else's platforms designed to do just that, to keep you? And now, like I said, I'm going to say it again. We are goddamn digital sweatshop workers. Whenever you spend eight, nine, 10 hours a day in social media, whether you are building a brand or just being fucking nosy and in other people's business, your life is now consumed by social media. So me, I step back and watch trends, anomalies, and go, wait a minute. Mm. Everybody, every other third person on my timeline is talking about a brand. Yo, I'm building my brand. Yo, I got my brand brand. We got a brand too. You know what I mean? Right. And so it, it goes to show, and I'm going to be honest, I didn't, I, I'm not in the t-shirt business. You know what I mean? Right. But my wife is passionate about graphics design. So now she has a platform because those are all her designs. You know what I mean? You're passionate about communications. I'm passionate about putting something on a shirt that'll make people go, yo, that was crazy. So we all have an interest in it where our passions can be manifested, but I don't intend, and you know that. We right. said we're not going to launch a t-shirt or hat enterprise. Right. This is a vehicle we are using in conjunction with we, what our real passion is, writing and, and, and disseminating information. That's the passion. Facts, facts, so this yeah. is a vehicle, so you know, just throwing it out there. So I'm not knocking people who want to start a brand. I'm simply saying everybody can't have a brand you, you realize, because there are no, you know. You realize some, a, mo a lot of people have brands like a lot of our, uh, I guess, like intellectuals, quote unquote intellectuals, mm -hmm. um, they have brands based on how much they are oppressed. Absolutely, That's their it. whole brand is based on their oppression. That's it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And so we're manufacturing this in real time, yeah. and we don't realize we're falling right into the trap. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so just be wary. So I want to reiterate, I'm not telling you do not follow your dreams. You should always follow your dreams. I'm not telling you don't start a brand. Just make sure you understand the concepts behind having a brand, not just so it's cliche as, oh, yeah, I'm working on my brand. You know what I mean? Because, uh, again, we're being flooded on the timeline with all the same information. Everybody got a shirt business. Everybody healing. Everybody got crystals. Everybody got this. You know what I'm saying? Based on our oppression and, and things of this nature. So we need to be aware that there's another level to this digital awareness that we need to become aware of, unless we're going to be digital sweatshop workers is where they wanted us to be anyway. Right. You don't actually think 
uh, Google and Amazon and Apple all started in some rural neighborhood in a fucking garage, do you? You don't really think that, do you? I, I'd like to think no, that. No, 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 <laughs> stop that bullshit. These companies are too powerful and too important to have left a chance like that. You know how many times I done smoked a blunt with my man and we had brilliant ideas <laughs> and when the blunt go out, nigga, the whole conversation is gone. You mean to tell me these fucking dorky white boys yeah. sitting around getting high in the garage and now they have multi-billion dollar companies trillion. that run the world, trillion dollar companies? Yeah. That don't work like that. Your government, first of all, and this is just my humble opinion, your government is far more technologically advanced then they're leading on. So sometimes they have to make these uh, programs which will control your life appear organically out of nowhere with backstories to them so that you don't recognize just how technologically advanced we are. So when you see the new iPhone or you see the new this, your mind won't go beyond that. Where if you really knew how advanced, technologically advanced this government is, your consciousness would immediately grow exponentially mm. because of all the possibilities. So how do you keep billions and billions of people on lockdown? You drip them a little bit of technology at a time, you know what I'm saying? And, and incrementally raise the consciousness of the people. Think about the world 10 years ago when we didn't have no internet or it wasn't as, you know what I'm saying, as it is now. And look how far we've come in 10 years. You know what's crazy? But look how far we've come, but look how much we've uh, crushed ourselves now. At the same time. Yes. Uh, 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 mentally, spiritually, intellectually. Yeah. The more technologically advanced, the dumber we have become. Yeah. My elders been taught me that in, in concept, and it's happening every single day. The new iPhone is slimmer and mm. sleeker. We really put fiber up to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> They up to iPhone 35. I'm willing to bet my life on it, but and they'll bring that to you in 2027, right. and you incrementally raise your consciousness based on that. So we are now engrossed in a digital era where, you know, if 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 digital this whole digital shit didn't exist, 95% of us wouldn't have a brand. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Unless you got a brick and mortar store, how did we work our brand? 15 years ago. You either had to be a rapper. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's how your brand pumped. Or flyers. Or in the conscious community, we had VHS tapes. <laughs> VHS tapes. That's how far back yeah. I go. V that was it. And we, we handed out flyers and this and that. There was no, you could, you know, grow and have awareness. Because remember, every time your government gives you something, they also take two or three things away from you. Mm. It's like being in a union. Yeah. So they raise, they give you a raise, but behind closed doors, they took away this and took away that. That's just the way this whole shit works. So the internet in itself and social media, neutral. How you choose to use it, advantage or disadvantage, but how many sisters are out of work if Instagram goes down? Yo, so um, they actually, uh, they, in Canada, they're, they're experimenting with taking the likes away. Yeah, yeah, they're going to do it here too. Yeah. Because the likes is what fuels people. That's the digital energy. The digital dopamine. The digital dopamine. Yeah. Right? That fuels people, and some people cannot function without likes. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm still confused on the likes and hit the like. You're supposed to hit the like and... I don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to figure it out. It's like having your grandmother learn how to use a computer. Yeah. Grandma, just hit the space. You wrote the word the. <laughs> what's, what's that bar? Yeah. That's the space bar, Grandma. All right, I'm going to hit the space bar. You see what I'm saying? Right. They're not equipped to adjust. And before we totally give ourselves over, and we're wasting valuable time. This is the new mind control. Right. Now you're chasing a fucking carrot that means not how many have a brand that really mean anything except you trying to get a few fucking dollars. Right. Just be honest with yourself. How many people are building a substantial brand to change realities? Right? Mm -hmm. So do not think any of these major companies started in some fucking warehouse. That's all bullshit. It's, it's, it's impossible. That's like that, that story with Dr. Dre and Eminem. He was in the warehouse and he saw a cassette tape and 
he put it in his pocket, and then when he listened to it, it was a dude, he was dope. Then he found out he was white. Oh, man, this is crazy. Get the fuck out of here, right? His ass was about to drown in aftermath. That whole aftermath shit and the firm and all that shit was failing, and this white boy saved his fucking life. Jimmy Iovine said, listen, I got a white boy out here because the world, <clears throat> the white world was waiting for a so-called legitimate MC, not a vanilla ice, you know, not a ice ice baby or, or uh, jump around. He was pretty cool. Not none of that shit. They was waiting for a legitimate white boy who had a few bars. And then with Dr. Dre's production and stamp on it, because we only authenticated him because of Dr. Dre, mm. right? Those, you know, who grew up in that era, white boy, but Dr. Dre was behind it, and the rest is history. Dr. Dre is now where, but the story will be, there was a dusty cassette tape. You understand that yeah. he put in his pocket, didn't pay no attention to, and it happened to be the greatest white rapper who ever fucking lived. Fuck out of here. I know better. <laughs> and you should know better if you're just on top of your game, Right? So I do believe, you know, those who are legitimately, legitimately into brands, start a brand. But the fact that every other nigga I know is is got a rap album coming out, if that ain't mind control, I don't know what the fuck is. I mean, yo, but back to the Instagram thing. Once the likes go, people will, like because these brand, like a lot of like uh, companies, they pay people to they. Sp- to sponsor their stuff based on the amount of likes. Influencers and yeah. how many likes you're going to get. How many get. likes you get. So how is that going to work? How is that going to work with your money now? Yeah. Now I can't demonstrate the likes or now I have to have a back sheet, you know what I'm saying, yeah. that shows the likes that I'm getting even though they're not being displayed. Right. You know what I mean? But if they're not being displayed, why do I want to like Who cares? Who, cares? Who the fuck cares? Right, 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 right. right? So they have you in by the, by the balls right now. Yeah. Right? They change into YouTube... Laws all the time. If this nigga say, stop saying blue, niggas will, the most revolutionary niggas will stop saying blue. Yeah. Because it's going to fuck up their money. Don't play with me. I know what time this is. Yeah. So we are not in control of any of this shit. So I, I think that's a great segue into um, uh, Farrakhan getting banned or Facebook. It's a great segue and we can go right into it. What do you think about it? Um, The, the, the ban wasn't about Minister Farrakhan. Okay, because... uh. The minister been around, what, what, 60 years yeah. doing this shit? They got a file on the minister this goddamn long from right. the time he was a student of Malcolm X. Farrakhan gave a million-man march. I was there with word of mouth. You know what I mean? Yeah. So his influence and power is not at all at jeopardy. You know what I mean? I think the newer members of the FOI, the younger generation, decided to use the medium of, you know, the Internet to their advantage to introduce younger people mm-hmm. to who their spiritual leader is. Right. But I doubt Minister Farrakhan is somewhere in his crib like, yo, how, how are we doing on the ground? No, so, no, what did you think about the response that he got banned? Uh, that was hypocritical. I thought so as well. Okay, we can't, let me, let me, get, let me mic myself back up. We can't, Talk about, you can't come in my house, Malcolm, if I tell you to put your shoes down here and go sit down. And I'm not going to let you come in my house and talk shit about me, yeah. even if the shit you're talking is the truth. I'm not going to let you do that shit in my house. Right. You got to go. So Facebook, Zuckerberg, and niggas is Jews. You know, all this shit is Jewish, owned and run. Farrakhan is talking about Jews. And y'all are upset. It's hypocritical. And I'm not saying he ain't speaking truth and you can't say, well, it's freedom of speech. It's freedom of speech, not in my house. Right. And people people think like these uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook are controlled by... The Constitution? The Constitution. Right, right. These they are think privately this is constitutionally, owned. Yeah. These are privately run own companies. Right. So that, obviously... That run ads. All so day long. That run, they get so much money. Because first of all, it's free for you. It's free, to, free for you to use. That's, that's because they're selling your data and they're getting ads from these companies. Absolutely. So as a company, if somebody like Farrakhan is ruining my money. Fucking up my bread. Yeah. He got to go. Got to, yeah. Point blank. Yeah. So y'all making a, a piss about that and you in somebody else's house. The audacity of niggas. 
Niggas, let me tell you something. We 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 got some audacity with us. We could be in your house talking shit about you and get pissed when you tell us we gotta leave. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we have to understand this is a digital house. It's privately run and privately owned. And it's not about Farrakhan, it's really about you. You know what I'm saying? What they deem you starting to talk about hate speech and this and that and governing your thoughts and okay. They're already monitoring you. All right, Malcolm, uh, you know what I'm saying? He don't like this. But we see his shopping patterns. He live in a place and he buying guns. And we see here part of a hate group called uh, the Conscious mm. Metanetta <laughs> Oncotitions, whatever the fuck. He a part of that shit too. So, the, uh, you know, the algorithms already create a profile on who you are. And... I like to say what nobody else wants to say either. We ask for this. We ask for it. Every yeah. time a racist white dude like Alex Jones, for example, yes. Richard Spencer, Richard Spicer, whatever his name is, gets on and we say, take his channel away from him, take him down off Facebook, take him down off Instagram, they say, well, all right, we got you. We got you. Uh-huh. I bet. But now if we get Farrakhan or somebody like that, you up, again, you can't be up and on. Selective... Uh, prejudice outrage. and outrage from our people. Yeah. Right? The reactivists are, you know, just, it, it's crazy the audacity of who we think we are. So we want to point out other people's shit, but whoa, 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 whoa. That don't, that don't, that don't uh, apply to us. Yes, it does. You know what I mean? Right. And then there are those who are going to say, because I can read the comments without reading the comments. Well, we need our own network. Now, I want people at this time in the video, what minute are we at, D? Uh, 20, 22. Go back to 20 minutes and above, and you're going to have people in there saying, we need our own networks. And you're right. But do not think these networks are started with a few thousand dollars in an idea. For, okay, oh, These man. is multi-billion dollars that go behind. This is all CIA operated. So all of this shit is funneled by the fucking U.S. government. Could you not imagine that? So unless you're down with the government, your network will never reach their status. Yeah, for, no, I want to just point out, uh, go reference uh, the Alliance Football League. Yeah. AAF, I forgot the... Actual yeah, name. the American something football league. Yeah, they went bankrupt in the middle, in like week three, week four. They couldn't even pay the players. They couldn't pay the players. Some dudes were stuck in cities. It was like, you got to get home on your own. Because they couldn't pay the players. But, and you got to understand, like, this was started... And one dude put up $250 million to save it. Yeah. And his money was going like this. So the money behind these major conglomerates is more than you could possibly imagine. So do not be fooled, brothers and sisters. So when uh, Master P says, yo, Kaepernick, we should just start our own league. It's, yo. That's it, that's him talking out his ass. Yo, it gets me be, so No, mad. but you gotta understand, that's, that's feel good rhetoric for our people. We like to say shit like black power or Yo, we need to buy black or, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, but do not make it seem as simple as, because listen, we, we don't own YouTube, we don't own Instagram, we don't own Facebook, we don't own iPhones, we don't own all the things in which we're communicating with each other to tell, uh, to each, tell other, each other we need our own. that we need our own. <laughs> do you see the, the, the quagmire we're yeah, in? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Are you telling me I should work for the white man? No, I'm telling you, you already do. <laughs> Challenge me on this shit. I'm telling you, you already do. All right? So you have to find, you have to, the ones who are going to survive are the ones who can adjust and understand and be aware of what's really going on. But there's a super duper trend of branding going on. Yeah. And people who can't even manage a fucking checkbook are now talking about their brand. This excludes, I shouldn't have to say this, but there are a lot of simpletons. This excludes those who are serious about their brand, serious about their, you know, what they're passionate about. I'm not talking about them. Right. I'm talking about the masses who are asses, who are filling in empty space with brands that we could just move to the fucking side yeah. and get to real brands yeah. that can change things. Like I always, like when people, I know like a lot of like um, people who call themselves business consultants, but they've never 
run a business for four and they, or they never even worked for. Or they real estate moguls and they ain't got no property. Right. You know, I, right. I'm I, I'm always like, okay, uh, so let's see what you got there. Yeah. Yeah. Show me what you got. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? And if you ain't got it, or you a financial advisor and you broke, right? Then you're the perfect financial advisor. I don't want to see. Right. <laughs> You, you understand my yeah. point? So you got to walk your walk. You know what I mean? And not too many people are walking their walk. They're quick to jump out and tell you. Because I don't give a fuck about cryptocurrency. I don't give a fuck because it's, it's, I'm not passionate about it. Right. I've been around since food stamps. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be around. Now, does that mean I don't need to understand it? Of course, there needs to be a general. But if you watch every third or fourth person on the timeline, you need to get with bitcoins and, and this and that. People are jumping out in front of something, trying to be in the genesis of it without truly understanding it. And it's flooding my timeline with bullshit. Yeah. You, you understand my point? Back. So I didn't come here to give a overall rant, but back to the Farrakhan situation. This was never really about Farrakhan. This is about them tightening up. They own the house now. They've been owned it, but they let all of you fuckers in the house, and now y'all can't leave. Right. Or you can leave, but you don't want to leave. So now you stuck like, oh, dudes be awesome. Yo, I was on the Facebook lockdown for 30 days. But you back. <laughs> but you back. Yeah. So that means there's something in it of value for you or you under mind control. Right? And I swear, as soon as they go, it's inevitable. And take all that shit away or change the rules and regulations and <laughs> shit. Niggas is fucked. Yeah, you, you see it. You see it with, uh, with a lot of people. Uh, once uh, YouTube changes up their monetization. That's my point. Is, you, you see how people act. They, they don't like cursing in the titles it's, anymore. It's, it's niggas who are shook. Yeah. Oh, I can't say that now. Master yeah. gonna hear that. Shut up. Shut your mouth. You know Master gonna hear yeah. you say those close words. So now, so then you just demonstrating you work for the white man. Come on, bro. They telling you what to do. You can dress it up any way you want. If you're on a platform and you can't say what you want. And don't be ashamed if you adjust because you have to make right. adjustments. I'm not shitting on that because yeah, we good. have our meetings and y'all be like, yo, dad. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've told you to calm down. Dad, you got to calm times, yeah. down because I don't be giving a fuck. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I do understand in the grand scheme of things, you know, how the social political aspect of this shit works. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? And to where the point I have to taper it down because we won't get commercials mm -hmm. or or whatever it is that we're getting. You know what yeah. I mean? But I'm aware of it and I'm willing to admit that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You come here, you get transparency. Yeah. I'm willing to admit I had to calm the rhetoric down because we was losing uh, likes or something. Or subscribers or whatever it was you know what I mean so but I'm not gonna be up here telling you we need to get our own with no full game plan laid out on how to get our own that's feel-good talk we love that hope I mean hope I mean yeah. we oh sell me hope nigga give me a fix of hope cuz then I don't have to deal with nothing. just hit me with some <laughs> oh. hope you know what I mean yeah and we have to move past that Icons. Celebrities covering one eye who are sworn to secrecy to mislead the masses into a life of negativity by way of destructive behaviors, i.e. drugs, sex, violence, etc. Most of these celebrities you see in the music industry and in Hollywood have taken a sworn oath to protect what they have going and to have you being misled by using drugs, violence, and all of these other crazy behaviors. Be careful. Beware of those who are pointing at one eye, covering one eye, or trying their best to shut down your first eye. Log on to UrbanX.NYC for the latest in apparel or shop UrbanX.com to pick up the latest in our not-so-subtle tees. And we thank you for your support. Peace. What else are we talking about? Uh, did you see the pictures from the Met Gala? I did see some of the pictures from the Met Gala. What do you think? Uh, I don't know what kind of I don't know what kind of event this Met Gala is. Yeah, me neither. But obviously, it's a big ritual going on every year, where the best of the best come out in uh, you know wardrobes 
that are extreme in a lot of cases. Uh, your man, uh, 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 Odell Beckham, had a dress on. Oh, yes, yeah, skirt. Yeah. He had a skirt on, and um, your girl had fried chicken. Uh, Tiffany Haddish. Tiffany Haddish. So usually I don't care about stuff like, like you know, right. like, yeah, when, yeah, I don't waste energy. I don't on care, but I was just kind of like, God. Dude. And here's the thing: when I first heard it, if and I'm a, and I'm gonna be fair with it, if Tiffany Haddish, if somebody had caught her in the corner, reaching in her bag eating her chicken. I would have been like, all right, because you know, you go to some of yeah. these events, they got that white food yeah. there, unseasoned, bland. Right. You better, I better bring me some real fucking food. Right. Like, my mom's always told me, eat before you go places. <laughs> this way, you're not hungry. You right. know what I mean? And if they serve something else, you enjoy. If not, you can just pick at it. And I teach that to, you know, my daughter and different, you know, don't go out on a date with a nigga with no money and make sure you eat before you go. Because you don't know what his, what his budget is and shit. So if she had did that, okay, fine. But the fact that she wanted you to know, because she was on the red carpet and showed the photographers her chicken, which meant she wanted this attention. She right. wanted to smoke. And then she doubled down on it and said some weird shit like, uh, I don't know why black people are all upset because we don't own no chicken farms. Or, you know, she went there with it. Yeah. And it was a real weird statement. It was real, I was confused. You know, because we were brought up on a slave plantation you know, and chickens were there, and we fucking caught the chickens and fried the fucking chickens, and that's why we like fucking chicken. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the fact that we don't own any chicken farms was a really weird statement for me. But again, um, this is what society has put in front of us as the uh, the ones you should worship and idol idol worship, and the ones you should uh, you know put your time and energy into. And Odell Beckham has always seemed a little. Uh, Happy. Yeah, I, I foresee him with a husband. Yeah, soon. 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 He's always been, uh, and society accepts that, and that's the world we live in yeah. and, and now. So it's not, it don't need, that don't even have shock value anymore. Yeah. So crazy as crazy, crazy as it seems, right, I didn't right. look at it and go, holy shit. Right? Yeah. I looked at it and said, look at this nigga. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's where we are in society. The shock value levels are low, and shock value generates energy, energy generates excitement, excitement, and, you know, generates movement, which is currency, and it's all related to money in some weird way or direction, but that's not doing it anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Two men kissing on a poster, you shouldn't be in shock by that anymore. Yeah. But you still get people yeah. who are, you shouldn't be. You know what I mean? Because this is where society is going. Don't mean you should like that shit. Mm -hmm. Don't get it fucked up. I feel, yeah, a lot of people don't, uh, they, misconstru they misconstrue hate for not just agreeing. Right. I just don't agree with it, B. Yeah. I'm not going to hate you for what you choose to do. That's your shit, but I'm not going to make you make me like that shit. <laughs> yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I'm going down on my sword. I don't fuck with none of that spooky gay shit. <laughs> I go down on my sword, nigga. I'm an old school nigga. I like my women without a set of nuts. I'm old fashioned. You know what I'm saying? Sitting up with another smelly nigga, hairy ass, talking about love. It ain't happening. Okay, so uh, let's switch topics. Uh, yeah. Did you see the Aisha Curry uh, interview that uh, Red Table Talk everybody's up in arms about? Yeah, I did. I did. I didn't. Uh, well, you want to give some intake on that? Uh, so initially, I, I feel like I understood what she was talking about because, um, especially women, I have friends who have children, and they don't want, you know, they, their bodies change and things like that, and they don't want to just be mom all the time. They want to feel, yes, you know, beautiful. They want to. So I, when she talked about it, her insecurity, I just thought it was like real human to her. Like I, yeah, I, I yeah. get it, mm -hmm. I get. It. And then on the other hand, I'm just like, you're not gonna get the same attention as Steph, but Steph's worth two hundred million. Yeah, at you know the same time. So, yeah, yeah. But you know, I, I, I didn't. I don't think she deserved a lot of the flack she got. No, because we are reactivists. Yeah. People ran with it without a general understanding of what she was saying. Well, everybody on Twitter and Instagram are perfect, right? Right. right Nobody has right, insecurities. Right. Nobody, Nobody's, right. Everybody's perfect. Nobody has insecurities. Nobody right. has ever one day just got dressed. Questioned something yeah, yeah. and be like, damn, this shit is, you know, right. damn, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe this ain't tight or whatever. Right. 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 So that's, with that's that, one thing. That's one thing. And with that being said, the, what I took from it was this, there's post, Modern pregnancy or whatever the postpartum. The, postpartum, 
and it's real. Mm -hmm. And it maybe didn't trigger after the first child or the second. The third one may have triggered postpartum. Yeah, no, if you and it is a state of depression. Yeah. Right? When I did my uh, video, my dedication video to Rich, shout out to Black Magic 363. He got a dope uh, documentary called God Frequency, God Frequency. coming real yeah. soon. And my man Rich, the young elder, did the five bloodlines of hip hop for me. This is VHS uh, days. <clears throat> I did a dedication for fatherhood because they were both becoming new fathers. And I spoke about the time their queen is going to need to reassemble herself mentally, physically, and spiritually. So you have to grab that baby and give her time to go to the beauty salon to reconnect with herself because she just delivered the champ or the, or the little princess. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing process. So a lot of things get lost in that. And I don't care how externally beautiful you think you are. It's your energy inside. How do you feel? Now, with that being said, if she was a chick who was going to Walmart, like a regular chick, mm -hmm. it'd be niggas who holler at her every day, all day. Uh, okay. So let's keep that in mind too. You're an elitist. So you ain't shopping in common places and you're going around to elite events where everybody know who your husband is. Right. So nobody in their right mind is going to fuck. So she has to take... All of that into, because listen, fellas, if your wife or girlfriend looks good, every day she curbing niggas. She curb niggas when she come out of the building. The nigga on the corner, hey, ma. She curbing the bus driver, good morning. She curbing the person who's serving her coffee. She curbing niggas. The security guard who opened the door at her job. She curbing the mailman. You know how many niggas, you, you couldn't imagine how many niggas hmm. your wife done curb the time she get back in the house. Because she don't talk about it. It's just a part of the process of what she does, especially if she's happy and you handling your business. You know what I mean? But these are common women who walk the street among common wolves. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Uh, uh, Aisha ain't walking amongst the wolves because if she did, niggas would be like, yo, ma, what's good? <laughs> hey, hi, yellow. <laughs> well, fuck you too then. <laughs> Shit, you can't stop it. Talk to her you know what I mean? And that would boost yeah. her confidence yeah. that she's still wanted. Right. Right? And Steph is out playing ball. He trying to win another chip. Right? So her being at home with the kids, maybe she also feels her life has been reduced to. Being at home with the kids. But he gave her a cooking show. You got your cooking show. <laughs> I don't know if people watch that shit. But, you, you know, Aisha's cooking show. That's what all of them wives do. They find something to do until shit get crazy. And then the pool guy... <laughs> Me, <laughs> like yo, my, you, you here alone, you know, by yourself. What the woman like you doing all alone? You tell me what game he's playing. I tell him a woman like you should be loved constantly. He's out of town right now. Is that right? Come on over to my place. We talk it over. All we gonna do is talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the way that shit goes. Eventually, you drop your guard. Now, the energy is different for men and women, right? Men always tell you when I'm in a relationship, nobody hollering at me. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Everybody's yeah. hollering yeah. at me, yeah. right? Because you're emitting a real positive vibe that they're attracted to. The minute you single, ta-da, nobody's hollering, right? Yeah. Or you got to work for it a little bit more. It's, it's almost like the reverse for women. When women love a dude, I don't care what kind of niggas is around her, she is focused on her man. And then when that shit change or he get funky and her energy change, you know, she draws more. So it's kind of like almost reverse energy. Because damn it, if I was in a relationship and you got a stiff arm chicks all day, like, oh, oh and you don't get no credit for that. We got to curb <laughs> chicks too, ladies. You know what I mean? Fact. We got to be like, nah, ma. I don't get no ding, ding, ding points. <laughs> that was a good job, husband. No, but let me attack something. The primitive side. Rawr, the wolf of the nigga come out, right? Yeah. So imagine, and then reverse that. Imagine Jay-Z said some shit like that. Oh, well, yeah. I'm not feeling, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not feeling loved. Uh, yeah. You know, the whole internet would kill us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Kill him, kill him, kill him. So there are different standards and how we move about it. But I think her situation is, and they got together so young. That's true too. So maybe she doesn't have a, he, you know, if, if he's like just the first and only reference point, how you know he putting in work? How you know? 
<laughs> That's what the shit I'd say to her while I'm cleaning the pool. Like, how, like if, how do you know he, you know, if you've never had, like, like a reference? Let me be a reference, and then you can go, all right, I get it now. You know, I, that's why I love my husband. Okay, but if not, then, and I'm talking mentally, spiritually, I use all them keywords on you, mom. Raise your chakras and shit. How's, what is he doing with your chakra system? What is the chakra system? See, this is what I'm saying, mom. You fucking with them little yellow niggas. I'm not, I'm not hating because I ain't hating on another nigga. Fucking with them little yellow niggas, mom. Get with me, ma. That's how that shit, the conversation will go. So because they got together young, you know, and they put in Jesus first and, uh, you know, all that good stuff, uh, you know, she's in a, in a tight situation where, you know, so I don't think she literally means she want niggas to come knock her down, but women want to feel appreciated. Yeah, they want to feel that. loved. So that's what I got. Yeah, that's her. what I got. I didn't really get all the other shit. The she me, was the literally funny. The memes, oh, the memes are hilarious. The memes are hilarious. The memes are hilarious. The internet is undefeated. Yeah. It really is. So that's the kind of vibe. I got from it, and our regular women go through that too. Yeah, you working long hours on the job. She's home with the baby. She ain't got it popping the way she used to for whatever reason. You don't see her the same. It can lead to little Andre down in the mail room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Recognizing because they all keep a little ding ding in the glass. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck up and break that glass and shit. So that's that's the way I, I took the Aisha situation. Yeah. I didn't really uh, dig too much into it other than that. Okay. So uh, uh, they just released, the, the police just released the cell phone footage from Sandra Bland when she got pulled over. Uh, I, most of this footage we still... Most we, of the footage I saw from the police, from the poli yeah. dash cam, so yeah. I don't understand what the big deal was. Was there something else in there? Because maybe, I believe he said he thought she had a gun or something really crazy, but it doesn't change the outcome. They killed that girl. Yeah. They kill that girl. I don't yeah. care what nobody say. And he resigned and was able to move on. They need to reopen these cases, but the cases are so many. There are so many cases in question here that we're not dealing with a police force anymore. I don't, this is these are killers. You know what I mean? Right. And you have to move accordingly in their mix. Yeah, I saw a video of uh, these cops. They approached this dude on his line. And said he had a warrant from another state. From another state. And it wasn't even his name. Like wasn't even his name. Yeah. And that's what we're dealing with yeah. now. This is a police state more yeah, than that's crazy. you can imagine. So we have to be careful out here. You, you, you got to be on your P's and Q's. Don't be a hero. Because these people, are, um, they don't process information the way we do. You know what right. I'm saying? They're animals in, in police officer uniforms. Right. So they have no compassion for you whatsoever. They can't even process what you're trying to say. So we have to be very, very careful and on alert. And um, I told you, man, Sandra Bland had me crying, man. That, that, yeah, that, that broke me. One day I just looked at a picture of her and she was speaking so much to my spirit and soul. Yeah. I sat on the edge of the bed and boohooed and was like, something has to be done about this beautiful sister. You know what I mean? Right. And it just was, it just was heartbreaking, um, you know, to have to see that. And how to go through that, you know what I mean? Right. So, um, but uh, we need to call on her name, say her name as they say, right. you know what I mean? So that we can, she can help us because coincidence is the language of the ancestors. So this may be her talking to us from the other side, mm. you know, trying to reinvigorate our interest in her case so that some justice, you know what I'm saying, can be served, you know what I mean? So remember, they can't, have a physical impact, but they can do things which affect the physical world from the astral realm and beyond. And that may be her way of saying, yo, let's relook at this. And I'm saying yeah. something very interesting. Okay. Anything else? Um, They got the lab meat coming now. That's legal, right? Yeah, like legalized that. lab meat. Uh, get up with Kamani, because Kamani does, Kamani Tate does the best work on Impossible burgers and yeah, so, uh, like, fake I, meat. I'm confused now, right? Why? Because, uh, first of all, first of all, they've been with lab meat a long time. Uh, yeah, I would assume so. Like, it's not 250 no billion served at McDonald's. Yeah, where the fuck all these chickens and burgers? Yo, bro, no, I thought about that. Like on Super Bowl Sunday, yeah. everybody in the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's that even possible? How? 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 Now, Buffalo Wild Wings never run out of chicken. Never. 
Never. Yeah, yeah. How's I'm, that even possible? Yeah. Where the fuck are they grooming these chickens at? That's a fact. And these cows and all this. It has to be some form of artificial uh, shit taking place. Clone but now they cloned meat. Uh, now they're just making it more public aware. But how do you get the people to accept cloned meat? How do you get the people to synthesize with shit that ain't real? So auto tunes is a form of music. That shit ain't real. That shit is computerized. Mm. Now we in the digital world all day. So our music is computerized. The shit we interfacing with is computerized. So now the food is fucking computerized, basically. Or we synthesize our vibration to now we can accept artificial food. And people laughed at me when I said that shit before. I said, all this vegan shit is fucking fake food. Artificial, yeah. digitized, fake fucking food. Yeah. Right? I'm not talking about the raw vegan when you're eating apples and oranges and grapes all day. Those are the only real vegans out here. Yeah. Th- yeah. Bacon, bacon, and uh, tofu, and all this old shit is a step down, almost just a step above you being a fucking android. You a fucking droid. <laughs> right? You can, you can just take it any way you want to take it. You know what I mean? So, the food is right now, so now... The climate is right to just come out and tell you. Yo, yeah, this came right out of uh, so-and-so labs. Well, that happened with, like, the Impossible Burgers. The, right. Yeah. Yeah. It was just delicious. Go back to the Matrix. And he ended up eating that slop. Yeah. And he said, how did they know what chicken would taste like? <laughs> how the fuck did, did they know? He said, no, this shit we eat and got all the amino acids uh. your body needs for, you know. But, no, you want, you know. Chicken. Yeah. How the fuck does the Matrix know what chicken tastes like? Yeah. So all of this shit tampering with our food buds and taste buds and not just introducing it raw, your music is that way. Wow, everybody's auto-tuning. You don't think that has an effect on your psychological? You don't think that bridges the gap between the virtual world and the real mm-hmm. world? Starts with the music. The music is the only thing that can enter your subconscious mind without your permission. It's it's where you where you you know where your magic lies. So now these niggas is digitizing your music to the point where now that's in my DNA. So my DNA is digitized. I'm online all fucking day. Digitized information. Now we just gonna bring you the food yeah. that is straight from no animal and you and for vegans. Animal eaters, it's really all the same. If you a vegan, you say the animal don't have no value anyway, and, and I'm not going to disagree with that. If you eat meat, you be like, yo, I grew up on this shit. This is Now, everybody fucked. Now the shit is artificial. All of it. All of it. Yeah. Right? Where are we going with this? Right? Pay very close attention, brothers and sisters. Where are we going with this? You know what I mean? So... I'm the type to kind of think all of it's connected. So I don't like to isolate it and say, wow, that's strange. There are no, you know, anomalies that's just popping up. I don't know where all of this shit means something. So Darden gets off the... uh, Off the Nipsey Hussle, uh, Eric Holder. Off the Nipsey Hussle, Eric Holder case. Yeah. Um, Strange that he got on the case, who paid him. Because he was wrong. He wasn't, he's not a public defender. No, he's not a public defender. He has his own law. Yeah. Firm, um, yeah. So somebody paid him initially, or, or he did it for clout. I don't know why you would do that for clout, and then back down now that you got the clout. Yeah, to, yeah. you got all clout now, right? So there's something else going on with that. Let's pay close attention because now it's upon us. They have had time to gather everything they need to gather to sell this to you, and it's going to be an amazing show. And none of that shit will be real. None of that shit. Yeah. All that shit is fake. So pay close attention. I don't even want to do another piece on that. But I will tell you, it's disturbing. Yeah, and uh we the if you if a lot of people seen the emails we get. Oh yeah. Man. Some people in Cali. People on people on in, the ground. On the ground yeah. in the family, basically. Yeah. I got some sources. Whoa. And when they laid it down to me, I said, ah, that makes sense. But I'm not gonna be the I'm not gonna be the one to get up, get up here and do that. That ain't you know my disposition. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So you need to go to shop. UrbanX. UrbanX.com. Support our shirts. Facts. 
We ain't, we're going to beat you in the head with a commercial or two. I'm telling you that now. Support our brand. You might have already seen <laughs> two or three commercials. Right? Support our brand. Uh, with that being said, this is the Black Dot. These are my chronicles. This is my story. And I'm sticking to it. Peace. Peace.